Hey, thanks for joining me. We're going to continue with The Savage Dragon because I love this book and you do too. Um, I got three of them out in front of us here. Well, uh, the reason for that is, is that we're here to look at issue 11, but um, the last issue I did most recently was issue 9. So why am I talking about issue 10? Why am I skipping that? Well, I've already done issue 10 um, months and months ago before I started doing the regular Dragon series, you know, issue by issue. I just wanted to showcase this one because it was the um, the winner of the create your own character and have them fight dragon contest. So I've already got a video up of Savage Dragon number 10. That one's already done. But I figured we'd do a quick recap before we get into issue 11 in case there's anybody who's following along at home. So we did issue 9. It picked up when Dragon was just recovering from his battle with Overlord in issue 7. The all splash page issue where... Um, one big giant fight and dragon got his ass kicked and uh, this is the issue where he's finally recovered and uh, putting himself back together but of course as happens in the savage dragon world nothing's easy super patriot shows up and just starts blasting away so he has to fight super patriot for whatever reason like super patriots on our side he's a good guy but um something's going wrong clearly so dragon's got to get away super patriot chases him around Dragon socks him in the head, and it's very obvious that Super Patriot is knocked out, but his body keeps going. That was an interesting kind of concept. As the uh, battle continued, we get to a point where the dragon discovers, as has been hinted in very small places here and there, that um, he finds this mind control slug or worm thing attached to the back of Super Patriot's head. As soon as Dragon sees that, he kills it. Super Patriot's back under his normal control. And um, so these little mind control worms are becoming an issue. It's something that's coming up, you know. Um, it's, a, it's a small story point that's building towards something bigger. So once that fight's over, Rapture, you know, part of Freak Force. She's been introduced in the book. She's super, super hot for Dragon. She keeps trying to throw herself at him. She just wants to ride his little dragon his little, his, he wants to ride his little dragon for sure. Um, but he keeps putting her off. Uh, Dragon's back with the cops after his fight. Uh, like I was saying, after his fight with Overlord, he was uh, gone for like weeks and weeks, months. And um, But now he's back. He's there. He did lose his hand. You notice Dragon's got his hand bandaged up. The uh, bad guy Overlord blew his hand off. Uh, we are also introduced to this character, Mace. This guy showed up and like one scene and beat the shit out of a really powerful creature that we've already met once before. Who is he? Well, we'll find out. Meanwhile, back with the dragon, he's in his apartment. Rapture shows up wearing nothing but an overcoat, drops it and crawls on top of him so she can ride that dragon. And it's right here when we find out that dragon's hand is actually regenerating. So the implication of the uh, ability for Dragon to heal himself is pretty profound. I also, as a kid, thought the naked figure of Rapture here was pretty profound. Anyway, that was issue 10. So like I said, I have already done... Uh, so yeah, that was 9. I've already done issue 10. We'll do a really quick flip through again. Um, don't need to get into detail because there's already a video up on it. But the main point of this story was the... Uh, Jimbo the Mighty Lobster, created by Jason Merritt. It was the Create Your Own Character contest, like I was saying earlier, and have them fight Dragon. Um, I, everyone that I know was interested in this idea. Like, I have my own character fight the Dragon. He, you know, being an issue of the Savage Dragon for Image Comics, how badass would that be? Um, I think I talked about this in the actual video on issue 10 that I did. I believe this Jason Merritt guy has actually died, and the rights to this character are kind of up in the air. But um, it's it's an interesting um, choice that Eric Larson chose. The the big thing about Jimbo the Mighty Lobster, this character that was created by just this reader that Eric Larson selected out of hundreds, if not thousands of entries, is one that he's big and strong, he's visually interesting, and he's got the biggest potty mouth of any comic book character I've ever read ever anywhere. And it's such an interesting like characterization dynamic. I thought it was so funny when I first read it. So, you know, Eric Larson puts in these symbols so you're not actually writing the word fuck, but you know what he's saying. Like right here, Jimbo the Mighty Lobster, he's just a guy itching for a fight. He just wants to beat people up to show, you know, to prove how tough he is. He says here, like his dialogue, nobody can fucking beat me. You fucking hear me? I'm fucking tired of hiding. I'll show those sons of bitches who's boss. I'm going to fucking find that fucking dragon fucker and fucking kick his fucking ass. 
It's like the greatest, dumbest dialogue I've ever heard. So I imagine that has to be, uh, you know, a character trait that um, the creator, that Jason Merritt, put in there. But the basic point is, Dragon's, you know, in town fighting. He's, he's back on the job. He's got his hand back. Uh, he's fighting the villains of, you know, Chicago like he always does. Eventually, Jimbo shows up uh, in town. They're going to meet up. Uh, Rapture, after, you know, the last time that they saw each other, she was going to jump up on top and ride his little dragon monster. But, the you know, the severed hand, so it kind of ruined the moment. So she shows up and she's like, I'm sorry I freaked out. He's like, I'm sorry I freaked out. Um, you know, it was a weird moment for both of us. She's like, so do you want to try this again? And Dragon's like, let's just, let's take it slow. I'm learning so much about myself. Let's just, let's just take it easy for a minute. But they're building a relationship. I like it. Anyway, we get back to it. Um, Jimbo the lobster shows up and just starts fighting Dragon. Just starts beating the shit out of each other. So several pages of just big, awesome Eric Larson fight scenes. It's fun. The uh, lobster guy is just cussing all the time uh it is funny i enjoy it a lot and eventually dragon finds out that jimbo all he wants to do is prove how tough he is so dragon takes a fall intentionally he's not really down but he pretends to be down because jimbo not knowing the dragon's faking it thinks he won so he's like all right i beat him i'm the best and he leaves so the fight's over so, you know, good resolution. And it gives the creator of the Jimbo, you know, the satisfaction of knowing that, you know, his character stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with the dragon. He didn't lose. Anyway, this point right here was an interesting build-up. The character of the Fiend. We've been introduced to this concept very slowly over the last several issues of this spirit demon creature that possesses the bodies of humans. And what he's looking for is people filled with hate. The more hate you have, the stronger the fiend's powers are when he possesses your body. And so he finds this schlubby guy and he's like, you've got a lot of hatred in you. We got to get together. Meanwhile, Overlord, they're talking about this character Mace that we were introduced to in the last book. He's super powerful. He's vicious. He's deadly. He's violent. We need to contact him. He, he'd make a great addition to the team. So Overlord's like, okay, contact him. And then this was an interesting point. If you remember in issue seven, you know, Savage Dragon, this character has had his best friend, uh, Frank, who's on the, the police force from issue one. He's the one who found Dragon when Dragon had amnesia and befriended him and blah, blah, blah. Well, in issue seven, they both went to go take down Overlord and Overlord vaporized Frank like to powder. He's gone. Just done. But in the next issue, we saw an airplane passing in the sky, and then we zoom in close on it, and there's a guy that looked like Frank on the plane. Now in this issue, Dragon gets a phone call, and a guy in shadow that's very obviously Frank, he doesn't say it, but we know it, and he says, it's a boy. And Dragon says, congratulations. So we're instantly like, Frank's still alive. Dragon's best friend is alive. His wife was pregnant. They had a baby. It's a boy. And Dragon's thrilled for his friend. So great. We're, we're glad that the kid or that Frank is still alive. But how the hell did that happen? What? Who got vaporized in issue seven? So mysteries building up and, you know, we're, we're getting on to what's going on. What kind of interesting stuff does uh, Eric Larson got going for us now? So issue 11, this is now the new issue that we're going to get into dragon fighting the fiend as we kind of saw we were been building up to so it starts out with that schlubby guy that the fiend was checking out so there's a lot of text here basically it's saying that he's just an average everyday pushover guy who doesn't complain he doesn't stand up for himself he's a follower but he sees life happening around him and he got just to a point where he became so angry inside that he started, his feelings started turning towards hate. Hate leads to anger. Anger leads to, you know what I mean? That whole bullshit. Like the Jedi, right? Um, so he's a nobody, but he's got a lot of hate inside him. And well, what does the fiend need? You see in his eyes? Boom, right there. 
there's the schlubby guy and the fiend. And Eric Larson comes up with some visuals of like him coming out of his eyes there. And the fiend is saying like he feeds on emotions. And again, the stronger the hate, the more powerful the fiend's abilities are when he's possessing the body of a person. So the more hate you have, the better. And this guy's apparently got a lot. Um, yeah. So we're building up to it. Now we get over to dragons watching TV and all these talk shows are talking about the dragon. Some guy's like, he's from space. This religious guy is like, he's a gift from God. Maybe he might even be Jesus. This other religious guy is like, no, he appeared naked in a burning field. He's the devil. We get back to the lady who's been established, this old lady that she thinks that dragon is her son. And she tried to come to dragon and explain herself like, you're my son. And Dragon, like, no, I don't know who you are, and I don't know whose son I am, but I don't think it's you. You just need to go away. So she's sad, and she's crying. She's like, he doesn't believe me. And Dragon's just kind of beside himself with being a celebrity, which he does not want to be. Meanwhile, flipping over, we get to this old woman we've been introduced to. She's the mother of Debbie Harris, the girl that Dragon got together with in the original Dragon three-issue miniseries. Um, they got together and had like a one-night stand, but they developed strong feelings for each other, and they got together, and then she got killed. You know, she was staying at Dragon's apartment. There was a knock at the door. Debbie went to answer the door, opened it up, and there was some bad guy there with a the gun thinking it was the Dragon. But they just fired at the per first person who opened the door, and it happened to be Debbie. She shot dead, and then the guy killed himself. So Dragon had to watch this girl that he loved dead. Well, this is Debbie's mother, and she blames Dragon. And we've been seeing the buildup to this in several issues. She's just screaming. She hates him. You destroyed my life. You killed my daughter. She's throwing the TV out the window. She's just filled with unbelievable rage. Well, where's that going to go? I think we can all tell. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's this character, Mace, that we were introduced to two issues ago for the first time. And then in the last issue, uh, Overlord, the leader of the bad guys, were, was trying to say, hey, we need to recruit this guy. We need him with us. And then so the cops show up and Mace is like, get back. Stay away from me. I'm here to take back the city for the common man. So it's like he thinks he's fighting for good guys. He's only he's only taking out villains and the cops like, yeah, we kind of want you on our side. So it's like the villains want to recruit him and the cops want to recruit him. Back with Dragon, he gets a knock at his door. There's Rapture dressed in one sexy ass black outfit. She's like, come on, we're going out on the town. We're going to have a date. So he's like, oh, all right. So he puts on a giant suit. They go out. They call a cab. So. Again, I like that Eric Larson, he builds on this relationship between Rapture and Dragon. Like, I don't know. I feel like if this was an old school 80s era Chris Claremont issue of Uncanny X-Men, he'd have a character introduced and the relationship built up in 17 pages and they're, they've been together forever. Eric Larson is drawing out the buildup of this relationship. He's having them take it slow. They're having them kind of meet each other and flirt and then not see each other for a while, then meet up again and flirt and talk and then actually start spending time with each other. Now they're actually going on dates. Hell, she tried to fuck him just a few days ago, but that didn't go well. So it's like, all right, let's go out on a date. Let's go do something normal. Let's go out to dinner. Um, they call for cabs and um, Dragon's like, you know, I just, we have to be careful because the last girl that I was close to, she got herself shot and she's like, I know, I understand, but you know, you got to move on and I'm here to move on with you if, you, if you're interested. He's like, okay, I, I can live with that. Let, let's try it. Meanwhile, this guy shows up. Um, I can never think of his goddamn name, this character. I know who it is. If I saw it, I'd be like, right, of course. Um, I, it's driving me fucking nuts. <laughs> I did this last time he showed up. But there's um, another side title that uh, Eric Larson has going on with this character. And... Um, there, there are things that happen in those books that affect story points that are going on here, which is why they show up and they talk like they've got kind of like uh, a history, even though we haven't seen it in the dragon. 
But um, he shows up. Rapture's ready to frighten dragons. Like, no, hold on. I'll just hold on. Hey, come on. Hey, guys, let's go outside. We're scaring the commoners. Like, you guys are stupid. Let's, you know, don't show up here at a restaurant and scare everybody. So they get out there. And um, Dragon says, I don't know how to break it to you guys, but your robot sparring partner is Dust. And so the little robot, Wally is his name, the side robot, um, Vanguard, Jesus Lord, it's the name of this character. But um, the robot's pissed off that the, the sparring partner is Dust. So basically what it is, is Vanguard here, he's an alien, and they've got like this robotic creature that can t alternate forms and look like anybody. So Dragon, his plan was to go get that robot to come with them so he could get killed and Overlord would think that Frank is dead and thereby freeing Frank from Overlord's interest because Frank was being um, blackmailed and it was ruining his life. Well, it worked sort of, but they didn't think that the robot sparring partner character... Um, that he would get vaporized and die. And so the little sidekick robot's pissed off. So he blasts Dragon. And Vanguard's like, fucking stop it. Knock it off. So Dragon explains what they did and why they did it. Um, he says, you put your morphing robot in my care and told me he would obey my commands. We hatched a plan. Disguised as Frank. He came along. It was perfect. But then Overlord disintegrated him and kicked my butt. So they're like, well, all right. We understand, you know. Um, Vanguard does say, hey, by, you know, thanks for telling us what went on. We're sorry that it went that way. But Vanguard says, just remember, Dragon, this robotic shape-shifting character, they're really, really hard to kill. So he's like, if this charade that you're putting on to make sure that Frank appears dead to Overlord, you better make sure that the robot is dead. Because they're really, really hard to kill. Even though he got vaporized, he may not be dead. So Dragon comes back with to Rapture. He's like, see, I can't have a normal life. We go out to dinner. I get shot at. So they're walking down the street. It's going to go home. And um, Rapture's into it. She's like, going out with you is like an adventure. So they get to his apartment. And he asks her, so do you want to come up? Now Rapture, she's like a little... She's like a little dirty little girl that's been trying to get on Dragon's dick since the moment she met him. Like we saw how she just crawled into his apartment one day and took her clothes off, was just going to jump on him and just, you know, go to town. But Dragon's asking her, do you want to come up? So they make out over five panels to show like the long, slow, passionate kiss. I really like it. I like the storytelling. But even Rapture, she's like, you know, that's okay. I'll pass. She says, after all, we're supposed to be taking it slow. Remember? I'll catch you later. So now he's got a case of, I don't know, green blue balls. He's like, well, shit. So he goes back up into his apartment. And if there's one thing you need to know about a dragon comic, it's be wary of the page turn. Boom. <laughs> Just that quick. There's the fiend. He showed up and caught drag. Good thing Rapture wasn't there. I mean, you know, she's no pushover. But Eric Larson can do some badass double page spreads and surprise the hell out of you with the turn of a page. Love it. And this fiend is this creepy looking monster grabbing the dragon. And so, you know, they fight back and forth. Love this big shot of the fiend clawing at dragon's face. There's not many people that draw big bombastic superhero fights like Eric Larson. Like he's just amazing. Um, the fiend can fire flames from his hand. So he's toasting everybody. And the fiend is like, you know, you have caused misery and suffering. So, the, the fiend, the spirit demon, combined with the human, become a single physical being. And the things that the human is angry at becomes part of what the conversation, what the fiend himself is screaming in anger about, partially. He's like, suffer for the lives lost, for the people who have died because of you. Suffer for the children who have turned to violence, emulating you. But most of all, suffer. So the fiend is almost talking like he's like the dragon is a bad guy and that's what's got him most pissed off but it's not the fiend that feels this way it's the human that feels this way and so the fiend is feeding off that specific kind of hate this right here was one of the craziest things where i was like eric larson will shock you dragon punches the fiend right in the face boom and then this giant shot 
where the fiend took his clawed hands and just put it under the skin and flayed his hands out to go like grab his skull. But his fingers are underneath the skin of the dragon's face here. I've never seen anything like that in comics up to this point when they, when this came out. I thought it was the coolest thing. It's so creepy. It's like just, it's not like going to kill the dragon, but it's like to torture him, to make him suffer, to just wound him and disfigure him and fuck him up. You don't see anything like this in X-Men or Spider-Man. I mean, good Lord. That, I thought that was the coolest thing. I absolutely loved it. So there's a crowd of humans gathered, including Debbie's mom, just screaming, kill him, kill him. The other humans are like, oh my God, I don't believe it. But she's like, kill him. Meanwhile, Fiend gets distracted. So Dragon, you know, punches him away. And um, Dragon says, innocent lives are at stake. You do remember innocent lives, don't you? I save them, Fiend, not take them. So Dragon's making the case. He's like, I save people's lives. I'm not some violent, murderous monster. And Fiend's not believing it. That's a lie. And then, um, you know, the fight continues. And the Fiend's like, you actually hurt me. And Dragon's like, yeah, I'll do it some more. Why did you attack me? What did I ever do to you? The Fiend says, nothing. You're good. I hate that. I, you see, Dragon, not only am I evil, but I am evil. So the fiend, the demon part of him is saying, you're just, you're good and that's just all I hate. I hate that you're good. I'm bad and you're good and I want to kill you. So right there in that moment, as fiend leaps at the dragon, the human part of the fiend, of the symbiosis of demon spirit and mad angry human, the human heard that conversation and it says here, so saying, the fiend is revealed. And deep within Doug Herman, the schlubby human from the first page, says he realizes that the dragon is trying to do good and he stops hating. The instant the human stops hating is the instant the fiend's powers go away. Bam, dragon socks him, sends him flying. And so now the spirit of the fiend himself, the demon itself, oozes out of the human, floats up there and says, you win again, but I'll defeat you yet. You will die at my hands. There exists a vessel that hates you more than I even. Um... And when I am united with that vessel, be forewarned, I'll be back. And it ends with Debbie's mom with an angry face right there. So you know where we're going. You know where this is going to happen in theory, right? If these two got together, because um, the fiend has been demonstrated to be extremely powerful, but never quite enough because he hasn't ran into somebody with enough hate. Well, we've been established that fat old lady is really, really pissed off. Meanwhile, um, Overlord vaporizes one, is, one of his minions and says when Overlord kills somebody, they stay dead. This is kind of a hint uh, to the uh, fact that he blew away Frank in issue seven, but um, Frank's not actually dead, as has been discovered, because he, uh, he got away because of that charade that Dragon and Frank concocted to get Frank out of trouble. So anyway, that's the end of uh, that issue. You know, most of these issues of Dragon are pretty quick reads. And I don't think that that's a problem. It's fun. It's exciting. But Eric Larson knows how to give you a perfect balance of big comic book action and fighting. And also just enough pages of character development to make you interested in the characters themselves. And he also weaves into the story... Um, future plot points. We got the little mind control worms. We got the character of Mace. We got the fiend going on. We've got Overlord. Like, there's all kinds of shit going on, and but the comic still is kind of a breezy read, and you get through it, and you just kind of get everything you need. You put it down. You're like, that was great. I can't wait for the next one, and that's how I was. So, issue eleven. You know, I've said this before. Dragon is still being made to this day. In it's issue, it's approaching approaching issue three hundred. Um, but. Uh, Issue 75 is when the best stuff ended, and it's really unfortunate um, for various reasons. But my intention is to do every issue of Savage Dragon up to issue 75 and then maybe one or two after that because it just becomes significantly less interesting after issue 75. But those first, you know, 75 issues are absolute magic, and so we've got a ways to go. I, I kind of know because I've read them, obviously, but, you know, it's been a while. 
all the things that are going to happen and all the places that Dragon's are going to go and the characters he's going to meet. People are going to come along. People are going to die. There's going to be changes. It's a hell of an adventure, and I love it. And um, I know the Dragon comic reviews don't get as many views as like a J. Scott Campbell book with Hot Girls or uh, Mark Silvestri or Jim Lee or Rob Liefeld, but Dragon's great. Dragon is fantastic, and I love it, and I recommend it to anybody, you know, if you like good, fun, action-adventure superhero comic books. Eric Larson is the master. So that's all I've got for now. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.